Hello, I am going to completely guide you through the setting up process for the Intel Developer Cloud. Also, we will enable you to understand how do we launch the Jupyter Notebook. It is a very simple process and very easy for you to follow. I will explain you step by step. Follow this and you should be able to get the connectivity done. The first step is to get the SSH key generated and the command ssh-keygen will come and help us in this purpose. You need to go ahead with the PowerShell and you will have to launch the PowerShell as an administrator. So I am opening it right now. You can see that I am launching it as an administrator and there when you type the command ssh-keygen it will work. Now it will ask you for certain entries to be done. Just press enter, press enter, press enter. That's all. You've got the key generated and you can see that it's confirming that the key has been generated. And also you could see the place where it is stored and it is in the C colon users sriramkv.ssh directory id underscore rsa.pub. So we need to know what exactly is this. So we are going to open it right now and I'm going to do that. Notepad and if you copy this and if you open this through the notepad you should be able to understand and view what is the key that is generated for your reference you can see that here the key is generated i request you to just copy until this equal to and keep this key safer in another place because we will have to use this at later point in time so the first step is done you have generated the key and you know what the key is where the key is saved you have viewed it as well this is done well, we will go to the next step right now and that is also easy. We need to log in or you need to register if you are not already registered with Intel Developer Cloud using this link HTTPS scheduler.cloud.intel.com I am going to do that right now and we will see that how exactly it works. Scheduler.cloud.intel.com and you can see that it is all available. First time if you are launching, you will have to probably fill certain details to get the account created. I already have the accounts with me, so it should not be a problem. Now you go to profile. There you have got something available here for you to fill the SSH key that you have generated. I have already tested it, so you were seeing some key there. But for you, when you are doing it in the first time, you will not see anything and you will have to fill the key here. The key has been already saved here, which I told you some time back and I am taking the key completely and I'm going to fill it up here. The key has been saved here. Click the save key option. That's all. The key has been saved and what you have done is very simple. You have generated the SSH key. You have connected it properly with your profile and before you log in, you must have created an account for you. If you have not created it, you should create it before you start working in it. Right? This is very clear and easy to understand. Well, we have generated the SSH key and now you can see that I have navigated into the directory .ssh. There, there are two files available for you, id underscore rsa and id underscore rsa.pub. This file is the one which I opened some time back to get the SSH key and we mapped it to the profile. But there are a few more things that we need to do and that is with respect to understanding what is your user id. We have a user id allocator, we need to know what is the user id. You are going to select an instance here and click launch. When you do that, what you get is nothing but your user ID. You can see that this is the user ID that we are talking about. Just make a note of your user ID. U101460 is the one that is allotted to me. I'm just making a note of it and nothing else. This is a simple step. This will be needed for you to include it in the config file, which we are going to create in the next step. Yes, we need to create a config file and that config file should go inside the SSH directory, SSH folder and I will show you where exactly it is available once more. You can see that it is available in the C colon users, my username followed by dot SSH directory. Here we are supposed to create a config file and that's what we are going to do right now. I have got a config file created already available with me and here you have the username right this user id sorry the user id is the one that we have found out just by doing some process what we have done right now when you click launch instance you get the user id make a note of it and that's the one you will have to fill in this config file properly without which it's going to not work right i have now saved this this is the config file i have given this also clearly in the description part of it you can take it up and you can identify what is your user ID and you will be able to get the user ID properly through the process and include it here. 
now where do we keep this file where do we store this that's the step that we need to understand i have created the config file and because of the steps and sequences that we have done we would have gotten a directory by name .ssh created it should be available here as you can see it is there so just go there and there you have got the config file i have, i have to add the config file whatever i have modified right now and i am replacing it with the proper user id if it is already there which means that i have tested it but when you are creating it for the first time you will not have the config file there and it is your responsibility to create a proper config file so ensure that you do this process properly now the config file is all done you have completed the process now the next step is going to be very simple where we are going to use powershell with certain commands where you will be able to launch the head node instance through which further process can be done so what we have done now very simple we identified what is your user id we created a config file in the config file we included the user id properly and we moved it onto the dot ssh directory that's all this is done we are getting into the most interesting part we have to open the powershell again and we have to issue certain commands and we are going to be introduced with couple of new terminologies here one is head node instance and another one is batch node we are going to use the command ssh my idc the moment you do that you will get connected to the head node instance and this will enable you to be authenticated that's all so you are getting into the head node and you have seen that head node is included here but is that sufficient no we need to get in into the batch node where you can get access to the required and desired uh, computing device so that's going to be very important for us so how do we do that the next step is going to be important this is the first command that you need to issue srun space hyphen hyphen pty space bash this is the first command let's issue that this is done right now and you have seen that it has been run successfully now we are going to run this command which will ensure that you are getting into the batch mode so the batch node will be activated and that will be visible very clearly for you once this command is executed you can see that we have got the batch hyphen pvc node earlier it was only the head node now you have got the batch node so this is very very important step and you also see that we have got all these one api environment items initialized properly this is a very important step so please do it carefully and i hope you understood that what did we do very simple we have gone to powershell we issued the command ssh my idc and then we have issued these two commands one after another to get the clear navigation from the head node to batch node that's it we are getting into the next step that's it try it out and it should work we are getting into the next step and we are going to configure the shell using the command conda init bash and we are going to issue this command in the powershell and let me do that right now for you it's going to be very simple and easy to follow let's issue this command and this is done right it is all done but you can see a message right in front of you for changes to take effect you need to close and reopen the current shell that's what i have also mentioned clearly in this documentation that i present you you need to exit and only then these changes will be effective so how do we exit very simple type exit right we have exited and you can see that it is back to head node here well what is the next step we need to get in again right how did we get in the first time we used a couple of steps those two steps are to be repeated and i'm going to do that right now it is done and the next step again the same command used to be repeated and with that we will be able to get in again and that's happening right now we can see that we have gotten into it so we have completed two steps here the first step is to configure this way and the second step is to exit are getting in again with the same step that we have followed earlier step 6 has been repeated and these three steps have been completed now we need to check available environment type so we are going to use the command conda env list and that's going to be simple as well we will see how exactly things are getting displayed we can see that these are all available with us and we are going to take some sample here and for our instance we can take pytorch_xpu for all of our learning purposes now we need to choose the environment as i told you and here we are choosing pytorch and i am going to activate it right now so how do we activate it pytorch_xpu is the one that we need to use and we need to activate it 
what is the command that we told conda activate is the command conda activate that's all this is done and it is activated you could see that in front of you you can choose any of these based on your requirements but for me just to prove that uh, this is working fine we have taken pytars underscore xpu as an instance and that is activated right now right the next steps are going to be far more interesting and we are going to do that now we need to get and check the allocated socket by using the command which is presented here we are going to just issue this command and we will get the socket details which are allocated to us i am issuing the command right here and you can see that it is 10.10.10.12 and this 12 is the most important number that you need to note remember it is 12 so now what is the next step to be done it's going to be very simple where i already asked you to note down the last two digits of the ip address that has been given now our duty is to activate the jupyter lab we need to activate it with this command and in this command the last column dot x is there right replace that x with one two which we have gotten in the previous attempt so this one two is the one that we have obtained as the result from the previous command execution and we are now trying to activate the jupyter notebook how do we do it just issue this command and the last two digits are to be replaced here that's all you have issued the command and you need to sit back and relax and things are getting done automatically here most important point to note is you need to remember what is the token that is being displayed here just make a note of this token because this will be needed somewhere in near future so i am going to keep this token safely made available here for us right this is going to be an interesting point so please remember you should not forget we have to get this token definitely noted down this is a very important point let's launch jupiter and let's see how exactly things work with the Jupyter Notebook. Now we are into the final stretch of the process. We need to open another PowerShell. So I am opening it right now and again it goes without saying we need to open it as an administrator. We have got a command here which you need to issue without fail and ensure that you are issuing the correct command with the number that we have obtained earlier 12 was the number that i have shown you earlier right make sure that you are mentioning it at right and uh, once you are done with it it's almost done let's see how things go it may take few seconds don't worry so that's all it's almost done now and we have only one more step to go that step we are going to do right now you're going to open a local browser right you're going to open a browser for an instance let's take this and i have issued the command here everything is successful it will ask you for a token the token is the one that i told you some time back which you should note down the powershell window that you have already opened has the token available for you again if you want to refer that's all just issue this token here that's it you are taken into the jupyter lab and the options for you to use all the available resources are becoming much easier right now you've got a linux terminal here you can start using it you've got all the resources in the world which you can use to learn one api and use the best of the accelerators for you to try it out you can see that we are able to access the pvc node right here and most importantly how do you get all the materials available for you locally i'm going to talk about that as well and i've got a command available for that now you can see that I have issued a command git clone and this command will get you all the materials and learning resources for you right in the Jupyter Notebook and you will be able to access that. That's all. You've gotten everything here and it is getting load downloaded and it may take few seconds for you to get it done but this is the way you can do it. With the terminal, you'll be able to access anything and you will get plethora of learning materials. For every one API toolkit, we've got materials available in Git and those are made available right now in front of you through the git clone and it's very easy for you to use further thank you